to it to give it its its operating system and to take care of all the heavy lifting for it. And a lot of these have been decommissioned, and you can find these on eBay really cheap for around 20 bucks a piece. Sometimes uh, even cheaper than that. I actually picked up two of these for $15 plus $15 for shipping. So. I got $15 in this device right here. I want to go through today and talk about what you can actually do with these and uh, some of the limitations, some of the drawbacks, but basically what you can get for $15 here is really pretty impressive. And I'm going to go through the specs of this machine, a teardown, and then I want to talk about the various projects that I've done with these. And uh, I think for $15, this is a pretty good value. Oh yeah, I should mention, if you go shopping for one of these things on eBay, make sure it comes with the power cord. If you get one without the power cord, it could cost you just as much to buy the power cord as it did the entire rest of the PC. On the front of the unit we have our power button, audio output, microphone input, and two USB 2.0 slots. On the back of the unit we have a 10100 Ethernet port, four USB 2.0 slots, Display port out, VGA out, PS2 mouse and keyboard ports, a serial port, and our AC adapter power input. Before I get into the teardown, I want to get into the specs of the HP T5745 Thin Client. It has an Intel Atom N280 processor clocking in at 1.66 GHz. The chipset is an Intel GL40 with 2 GB of disk on module IDE flash memory. It comes with 2 GB of DDR3 SODIMM RAM and Intel GL40 graphics. Dimension wise, it's around 10 by 2 by 9 inches and weighs just a little under 4 pounds. Let's look at a pros and cons list of this little device. The pros, it's fanless and runs completely silent. The processor is x86 PC architecture. It has plenty of USB ports for expandability, and though it's definitely not a Raspberry Pi, it's fairly small for a full desktop PC. Now for the cons. It's only a 32-bit processor, so forward support for most operating systems is definitely dwindling. It's a single core processor clocking in at 1.66 GHz, so it is definitely not a powerhouse. It only has a 10100 Ethernet port. It's also lacking USB 3.0 ports. Now let's get into the teardown. The first thing you'll need to do when you start your teardown is that you'll need to locate this single screw on the top of the unit. Once that screw is removed, just slide out this black plastic piece. Then you'll be able to slide off the side panels. They're just held in with slot clips. It's also worth noting that we'll find two more USB 2.0 slots hidden with inside the unit. This comes in handy if you want to tuck away a USB flash drive inside the unit. On the back of the unit, we've got an extra RAM slot. I had a 4 gig stick sitting around in my parts pile, so I've already gone ahead and upgraded this unit to 4 gigs. It's important to keep in mind that because this is a 32-bit processor, we can't upgrade past 4 gigs. On the other side of the unit, we have to remove five small black screws to be able to remove the access panel to get inside the PC. Here's a look at the motherboard where we can see the disk on module hard drive. We see that the unit is indeed fanless. We have a full PCIe slot, though there's no room to put any kind of PCI devices in this. They make an expansion module for these devices, but I've never actually used one. That would give you the full PCI capability to be able to use this. And this is our secondary RAM slot. Here we have a SATA slot, and with a little bit of persuasion and a SATA extension cable, we can indeed fit a solid state hard drive inside this machine. Okay, so now for the projects that I've actually done with these devices. The first and most obvious is a desktop PC. And for that, I've chosen Porteous Linux. For the layman, if you want to use this device as it ships, the challenge is going to be finding an operating system that will fit on its tiny hard drive. Now I'm experienced in Debian and Ubuntu derivatives of Linux, but I'm far from a Linux guru who can live without apt. The caveat to that is that most of these distros will no longer fit on smaller hard drives. That's where Porteous Linux comes in. 
If you need a basic OS to provide simple capabilities for office work, email, and simple web capabilities, this machine will more than handle Porteus. Also, Porteus modules are very easy to install. Just bear in mind that your web browsing experience on this low-end machine will always leave a lot to be desired, regardless of what OS you choose. The second thing I've done with one of these machines is created a dedicated Windows XP RetroWare machine. I picked up a 4GB DOM IDE hard drive, fairly cheap, and with a little finagling was able to install a trimmed down version of Windows XP to one of these devices. I basically installed XP to a 16 gigabit hard drive, removed unnecessary files, then I shrunk the partition and cloned the partition to a 4 gigabyte DOM hard drive, resulting in an extremely snappy dedicated Windows XP RetroWare workstation. Now I know what you're thinking, just virtualize that, right? But for me it hasn't been so easy. You see, there's this one piece of software that I still use from the Windows 95 days that I've had a difficult time running on a virtual machine. I have been able to get this software to run on a 32-bit version of Windows 10, but 10 is a lot more of a resource hog than XP, so I don't necessarily want to build a beefy machine just to limit it to a 32-bit OS. I'm also aware of the security dangers of running Windows XP, so this device simply stays offline. The next use that I've found for these thin clients is a file server, using both SMB and NFS protocols. So with the addition of a larger hard drive, I installed my favorite distro of Linux, Lubuntu, and this opened up a world of possibilities on this device. For a friend, I simply installed Lubuntu onto a USB flash drive and turned this little machine into a great file server. I added an external hard drive and gave the box SMB sharing for Windows machines and taking it a bit further, I shared the same locations under NFS protocols for lightning fast media sharing to any devices running Kodi. The next thing that I've done is turn these little devices into sonar, radar, and torrent servers. So if you're going to go to the trouble of making one of these boxes a file server for media, why not make one a sonar and a radar box to grab torrents? With the Atomic Toolkit, it's really easy, and it doesn't need to be a powerhouse to do any of these tasks. Just be sure to be safe and use a VPN. I personally use private internet access. It works like a charm on Lubuntu. And the final project that I've used these thin clients for is to create a wireless to Ethernet bridge. So with Lubuntu, you can use this box as a wireless to Ethernet bridge. Simply add a USB wireless adapter and all of the rest of the hardware is already here. I have a video showing you exactly how to do this with a Raspberry Pi. But because this is Lubuntu, the exact same method applies to this device as well. Okay, so that's everything I've done with the HP 5745. If you got any ideas, leave them in the comments below. If you would like more tech tips for the budget friendly, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you stay notified, and leave me a like. It really helps the channel grow. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.